Hello engineers welcome to mechanical training world channel in today's lecture we will discuss about design of scut support you will learn introduction of scut support for pressure vessels and types of scut shells and base rings guys and finally we will discuss design of scut support so these are the key takeaways from this session before diving into the topic if you are new to my channel please subscribe and click on the bell icon you will get notified if i upload any new videos so let's get dive into the topic guys the first one is intro introduction of scut support design so generally this is our pressure vessel right so why we need to use scut supports so the scut supports are used to support the tall pressure vessels guys so generally the scut supports are cylindrical shells which is used to support tall vertical vessels so the scuds are generally at the bottom of the tank guys so these are welded at the bottom of the vertical vessels and transfer the loads to the concrete foundation so this is your vessel right so whatever the loads coming from the vessel so that is transferred to the concrete through this scut support guys and while designing this scut support these scuds are not pressure retaining components so they can be made from structural steel rather than pressure vessel grade materials guys we can use structural steels there is no need to use high grade steels which are used for pressure vessels so let's discuss about the types of scut supports so generally scut supports are four types so one is lap welded scut support and one is butt welded scut support so in why this we called as lap welded scut supported means if you see here this is your scut and this is your shell and this is your head in head also this is your sfl right so if your scut is welded beside this uh, sfl generally this scut and vertical tank are connected through welding guys so here you can see welding area so this welding is looks like lap joint right so that's why we call this as a lap welded scut so generally this scut is beside the sfl i hope you got the point and next one is butt welded scut so this is quite little bit lower side of the vessel guys so if you look here this is somewhat similar to the butt welded scut so butt welded jo butt welded joint okay so that's why we call this butt welded scut so most of the industries use this butt welded scut only why they are not using lap welded scut means so if you see here the scut is beside the sfl so here due to this shear loads are high here okay but if you see here it is somewhat at bottom of the tall vertical vessel so somewhat compared to lap welded scut shear stresses are less here so that's why many of the industries prefer butt welded scut guys and next one is pedestrian scut uh, so this is generally used for uh, small tanks and the next one is conical scut so when we use this conical scut means if we require if you required high pcd at the bottom of the tank for bolting for bolting so then we need this conical type of scuts so generally this conical scuts uh, which stand more load compared to the butt welded scut guys so these are the four types of scut supports so next we discuss about types of scut base rings so these are the simple scut base so generally this is your vertical vessel and this is your scut shell and this is your base ring of this scut guys so in previous uh, slides we discussed about scut scut shell types so in this slide we will discuss about scut base okay this is the simple scut base design guys so our next one is scut base with gussets so whenever the scut base is not enough to bear your loads then we add gussets so to withstand more loads guys okay whenever this scut base with gusset also not sufficient then we go to scut base with continuous top plate so this top plate also withstand more load so this compared to other design this design withstand the more load guys so these are the general types of scut support in next slide we will discuss about design of scut support so let's see design of scut shell first so if you want to design a scut shell so what are the loads we need to consider to design the scut shell guys so what are the general loads we need to consider while designing this scut shell so this is your scut shell right so what are the general loads we need to consider so if you observe this the tank full weight is acting on this scut so we need to consider dead weight of the tank so dead weight means the vessel's own weight guys and next one is so it is installed at one location right so at that location generally we will observe some wind loads so generally we observe some wind loads right so we need to consider that wind loads also generally this wind loads are lateral forces causing bending guys so due to this bending will happen and next one is seismic loads so apart from dead weight and wind loads 
we need to consider seismic loads as well. So seismic loads means earthquake forces. Generally, earthquake loads. So these are the three loads we need to consider while designing the scud shell. I hope you got the point. So due to these uh, loads, what are the stress generally developed? So due to these loads, what are the generally stresses developed, guys? So due to first one is due to dead weight, right? So due to dead weight, what are the stress? Which type of stress generally developed in this scud shell? So if you see the weight is the weight of the shell is acting downwards, right? Due to this, the scud shell is under compression. So due to that compression, so compressed stresses are induced in the scud shell. Okay. And next one is wind loads, wind and seismic loads. So due to this wind and seismic loads, so if you see here, it, it will forcefully hit on this area. It will try to bend, right? So from this, we will observe that bending stresses. So there are two types of stresses acts generally on the scud shell, guys. One is compressive stresses that is due to dead weight, and another one is bending stresses that is due to that is due to seismic loads and wind loads, guys. But if you see the both the loads are acting at a time. So the both the stresses are induced at a time in this scud shell. So that's why we will consider combination of stresses. So there are two types of combination of stresses we generally use. One is Compressive stress, which is generated by dead weight, plus wind stress, bend stresses, which is generally induced by the wind. <coughs> and next one is compressive plus seismic. So these are the general load, uh, general stress combinations we need to consider while designing the scud shell. So we are we are not considering wind and seismic at a time, guys. So why? Because so generally the wind and seismic generally uh, it will not happen at a time. So if both are acting at once. So we will also die at that time. So that's why we are not considering wind and seismic. So there is no reason if we consider wind and seismic at a time, guys. So let's see how to calculate the compressive stresses. So generally, due to the dead weight, the compressive stresses are induced. Due to the dead weight, the compressive stresses are induced. So what is the formula for compressive stress, guys? So before that, I want to explain this also. So this is the area, right? We need to find out the stresses generated here, right? If you see at the top top view of your scud shell so generally looks like this guys so this is the thickness of your scud shell and this is the radius of your scud shell so i hope you got the point so how to find out these compressive stresses what is the formula for find out these compressive stresses so we know that stress is equal to load by area so compressive stress is equal to load by area so what is the load here w so dead weight is the load here so how to calculate this area so this is looks like uh, circumferential area, right? So circumferential shell. So generally for circumferential, the area of this shell is 2 pi RT. So this is the area of this cut, guys. So if you substitute this in the above formula, you will get compressive stresses. That is equal to W by A. This is how we need to calculate compressive stresses in the cut shell. So let's see how to calculate bending stresses. So the same. So we know that bending stresses are generally due to either seismic or wind. Here I am considering wind guys. So due to that wind loads, bending stresses are induced. So at engineering, we know that to find bending stresses, we have one formula. That is M by Z. Okay. So bending stress is equal to M by Z. Where M is the bending moment guys. Where M is the bending moment. How to calculate this bending moment? We know that bending moment is equal to force into perpendicular distance. I hope you are familiar with this formula. So moment is equal to force into perpendicular distance. This F is nothing but wind force guys. So wind force into perpendicular distance. So at what distance it is acting. So generally we consider at this center. At the center of the shell it is acting from the base guys. So this is the H by 2. H by 2. I hope you got the point. So anyway we are finding from this uh, here right stresses. So you need to take from here. So then your H your perpendicular distance is this one okay i hope you got the point so m is equal to f into h by 2 in this case and next one z is that section modulus so for cylindrical sections uh, section modulus is pi r square t guys so if you want reference for this section modulus you will refer brownell and ang textbook guys there you will find section modulus for cylindrical shells up to here we saw bending stresses and compressive stresses but our main focus is combination of stresses so let's see that combination stresses as well so generally we have two types of loads that is uh, dead weight and another one is 
stress is due to bending right so stress in s cut is equal to compressive stress plus bending stress you know that how to compressive stress formula that is w by a and bending stress formula that is m by z this is how we need to calculate combined stresses in this cut shell so if the stress in this cut is less than allowable stress in this cut then our design is safe so if the stress in this cut is greater than allowable stress then our design is not safe guys so i hope you understand how to find out the combination of stresses in this cut shell so let's see how to calculate the minimum required thickness for this cut guys so we know that stresses in this cut is equal to w by a plus m by z so we know the area of the uh, cylindrical cut guys that is 2 pi rt and uh, we know a section modulus for cylindrical object that is pi r square t so if you substitute this a and z in the above equation you will find thickness of this cut i hope you got the point so where e is the weld joint efficiency so we are also considering here weld joint efficiency guys so this is the allowable stress and this is the thickness of this cut so r is the inside radius of this cut shell so this is how you need to calculate thickness of this cut i hope you enjoyed this session guys if you find this valuable please subscribe my channel and click on the bell icon so thank you guys